LEGO games aren't known for their high difficulty. They're marketed towards kids, after all. But what happens when those kids grow up and still want to experience these games just in a new light? This is where speedrunning comes in, challenging yourself to beat a game as fast as possible, while abusing as many bugs and exploits as you can find, sometimes just to shave off mere seconds from your timer. LEGO games in particular have found a very specific niche within the trend of speedrunning, with some runners even creating custom challenges such as Grunt Percent, which is a marathon of the first 10 games in a row. All of these games are intense to run, and despite being created on similar engines, the tricks used in each game could not be more diverse. Having to memorize hundreds of different out-of-bounds clips, invisible platform jumps, or even doing complex puzzles with two controllers at once. But to me, this begs the question, what is the hardest trick in LEGO speedrunning? After studying tons of different games and trying out just as many separate tricks, I've landed on one trick in particular. One that, to my knowledge, has only been recorded on video once. This is the story of LEGO Indiana Jones The Original Adventures 1-1 Spike Skip. Before we begin, why don't we assess why I chose this trick? There are 67 different LEGO games being run on speedrun.com, and with that, hundreds to thousands of different categories. It would be completely idiotic to call one single trick the definitive hardest one, especially with each runner having different levels of practice between the games. What may be the most tumultuous trick to some may just be muscle memory to another. It's an unquantifiable merit. So how did I choose? I had to start looking for tricks that weren't done by every runner, and instead look for ones that were only done by the top percentage of runners. This would put a nice gap or separation between casual and more experienced play. The other trait I was searching for was versatility. Tricks that could be used across the board in nearly every category of said game. What good is a speedrunning skip if it's only usable in one single category? At that point, it may not even be worth learning in comparison to its difficulty. The trick needed to be obviously difficult, but also one that would save time in every category across the board, to make sure it's still worth practicing and learning. This narrowed down my choices by quite a lot. So much so that I was only stuck between a couple of things. Of course there were the out-of-bounds clips, found in nearly every entry, which are notably challenging. However, there was a catch. A lot, but not all, LEGO games have a glitchless or no out-of-bounds category. One that doesn't allow for the use of unintended game features. This made me write off glitches as a whole. Although not every single game may have a glitchless category, it has become a more prominent discussion point among runners in the past couple of years, and I want this video to age well, and not just be made outdated by a leaderboard update. Regardless of if I allow glitches in the games that don't have a glitchless category or not, I don't think it would affect my answer very much. Anyways, in Indiana Jones 1, no matter the category that you're playing, besides individual levels or movies, there is one level you always have to go through. Level 1-1. Furthermore, it is always the first level you play in story mode, since it's what the game defines as its tutorial. With the combination of it being one of the most common levels across the board, as well as it being the first level in most categories, you'd think it would be optimized beyond belief. That it would be a level worth taking risks in, since it is right in the beginning of your run. And that is where our trick comes into play. This dreaded room, right about at the halfway point of the level, has one of the most interesting strategy splits in the entire game. What the game wants you to do in a casual playthrough is climb up this ladder and swing across, place the box down on the middle button, and guide your partner player across. Most speedruns tend to take this same route, but they just do it, uh, really fast. 
Jumping up the ladder, grabbing the box, standing on the orange button, and placing the box down from that point so it auto sets into position, and then guiding your partner player across. With this strategy in the current gold split of 1-1, this puzzle takes up about 12 seconds. Naturally, runners began asking themselves, what could we do to speed this process up? It wasn't until September 1st of 2018 that some changes were made to the pre-existing route. While running what I assume to be the IL category, a category that focuses on individual levels rather than a full run of the game, a runner by the name of Hot Rod Zod did this after placing down the box on the middle button. It wasn't like this idea was brand new to the community at all. Archives show that there were people who were just messing around with the game that knew these corners were standable, but no one had dared yet to try what Zod did in an actual run of the game. By all accounts, this strategy should have caught on like a forest fire. For a game with around only 100 total runners, you would assume that people would be even hungrier for world record times than ever since it does seem way more achievable in a game like this than a popular game like Minecraft, which has thousands of thousands of different runners. But sadly, this wasn't the case. In fact, the only other noteworthy attempt at Zod's trick that was solid enough to make it into an individual level split was a run done roughly two years later by Lava Fang 407. It was likely that the risk involved with performing such a precarious jump wasn't worth the one and a half minute unskippable cutscene that plays out before this level begins. After all, Zod's trick only saves about two seconds, something that in the grand scheme of a full game speedrun was menial. No, there needed to be something else to make this trick worth it. Two seconds, while still a time save, would hardly make a difference in a game that, by the world record holder's account, still has many improvements to be made. This is where a runner by the name of Zero the Hero would enter our story, taking the skip done by Zod and turning it upside down. This was the Holy Grail, or rather the Lost Ark of 1-1, never needing to head towards the ladder or the boxes at all, and with pure grace and talent, jumping straight past all of these platforms. This trick has not been done in any run, not even for the IL category of 1-1. Put that in perspective for a minute. This trick is so difficult, the single level run of this game does not even incorporate it. And this doesn't just save one or two seconds off of the Hot Rod Zod clip. This takes the time from this section down from about 12 seconds in the casual route to about six, cutting the time in half just for this one single area. No matter which way you spin it, this trick is an undeniable huge time save and one that is often overlooked. Uh, how is it accomplished, you may ask? Well, it all sounds quite simple. You need to jump on the six corners of these spike platforms to make your way across the gap, which looks pretty easy when I do it here, but let's analyze the game in a more detailed program. As you can now see a little more clearly, the spikes are not just one square hurt box, but all individually modeled, leaving each of these corners as safe zones. If we take a look at our key, we'll see that the color that corresponds with spikes is fast death, and the color that corresponds with the ground is edge, and this is not a good combination. When ground is marked as edge, it is one step away from slide, which is what you experience when standing on things you aren't supposed to. Edges will guide the player off of them, but leave you in control. This means you have to be jumping off of each corner as soon as you land to avoid losing your footing, but that's just the easy part. 
Now that we understand what edges are, and I assume you can figure out what fast death means, let's check out the amount of space we get to stand on each platform. And it's really not that much. If Indy touches these spikes at all, it's over, and the amount of ground that's safe only gets worse as you move across. You have to do an almost perfectly positioned jump six times in a row without sliding, waiting too long, or hugging the spikes way too close. Yeah. I cannot put into words how difficult this trick is to pull off, but now we need to ask ourselves, at what point in this game's lifespan will learning this trick be all but required for speedruns, or will it ever even reach that point? Well, after talking to the current any% percent world record holder Chimkin, he seems pretty confident that the game could get a sub 1 hour and 15 minute time with all the current tricks in the game being optimized. Including all of the difficult lag clips and drop in warps. In fact, he even sent me a whole list of things that weren't done in his world record run, but in due time will be implemented. But in that case, what makes the spike skip my choice for most difficult out of all of these tricks listed? The remaining time save that Chimkin sent me are all out of bounds clips save for just one, which wouldn't be usable in any kind of glitchless run. The only other trick here is a frame perfect attack during the Balak fight that skips the second two phases of the fight. The reason I find the spike skip to be much more difficult is it is essentially several precise inputs in a row with a huge time loss if you mess up, as opposed to just a riskless attempt at the block skip. The more risk associated and the more technical skill required to perform the action, in my eyes, makes it more difficult. Now it is quite likely I brushed over something while researching runs of the other games. LEGO Indie 1 is the game that I am most familiar with when it comes to speed running. I tried my best to do my due diligence in my research, but it is very likely I may have missed something with the thousands of categories associated within this series of games. If that's the case, leave a comment down below on what you think the hardest trick in speedruns are. Or what your favorite LEGO game to watch be speedrun is, I'm curious to see. After this video, if you feel like picking up the game as a speedrunner, Gamago has some amazing guides on his channel to get you started. Big thanks to both Chimkin and Zero for helping me with the research of this trick, and you can find links to them down below. As well as Zach for providing me with the tool to view these levels with Freecam. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.